When the flush of a newborn sun fell first on Eden's green and gold, our father Adam sat under the tree and scratched with a stick in the mold. And the first rude sketch that the world had seen was joy to his mighty heart. Till the devil whispered behind the leaves, It's pretty, but is it art? I've been pretty bored by the AI art debate or conversation until very recently. I think AI art marks an important rupture in our perception and our appreciation of art, enough to call it a revolution. As you'll see, this rupture has existed for a long time, but AI art will make this separation, if it hasn't been done already, unrepairable. In a nutshell, AI-generated art consists of prompting an artificial intelligence to make an image. From a database of an unimaginable amount of images, it'll produce several which will correspond more or less to your prompt. Now, that's fun and all, but some concerns have been raised. Questions about the ethical collection of data to feed these AIs, or the ethics of using people's artworks to feed this AI. What about companies using AI-generated images to replace the work of artists? What if the artist who needs a wage and money to live is replaced by a cheap AI? This last question might sound a bit ridiculous, but works made by an artificial intelligence, at least digitally, can be indistinguishable from works made by actual artists. What does that entail? What does it mean for the future of artists and art? This video is made possible by the support of viewers like you. If you enjoy these and want to help me make more, check out patreon.com forward slash the canvas. I obviously don't have answers to all these questions and the opinions I will share here may change eventually. Knowing how contentious this subject is, I invite you to change my mind in the comment section if you disagree. I'll get some of the questions out of the way rapidly. What about the ethics of data collection for AI? Data collection online is not a problem specific to AI-generated art. It's a problem, but I think the AI art debate would still happen even if the data collection was completely ethical. It's deeper than that. What about the ethics of using the artworks of artists to feed your AI? The history of art is the history of copying and making reiterations of previous artworks. I would argue that human progress is the history of people building upon the progress of their predecessors. The problem with using the work of artists to create new artworks, which has been a common practice throughout history, is because AI-generated art is free, or very cheap, for corporations to use them. Artists who want to be able to feed themselves now don't only need to compete with other artists, but with a cheap, instant AI who can produce any art in a fraction of a second. The question here is, do we want to live in a world where the job of artists is replaced by AI? Technology and automation have always been an issue in terms of eliminating jobs. That's what automation is designed to do. Automation is a good thing. Any society in the history of humanity would gladly cheer for automation. Less necessary labor means a better quality of life, right? Well, not under capitalism. For capitalism, automation is a bad thing because if robots do our jobs, if they, for example, harvest food for us, then how will we be able to afford food? It's a paradox under capitalism. If production is automated, then nobody will be able to afford these products because most will be unemployed. Automation is a good thing if we assume that the labor made by machines is going to be for the benefit of humanity, not for the profit of the machine owners. But for art, there's something different about automation because we really want the human touch. Most criticism of AI art I found online boiled down to a gut feeling of discomfort to the idea that machines could make artworks indistinguishable from the ones humans make. Why does AI-generated art provoke this fear? I think we might be afraid that automized processes might make art less soulful, less human. However, I'm not entirely convinced by that. Disney's Alice in Wonderland was hand-painted frame by frame. Nowadays, many animation techniques such as tweening or rigging have computers do most of the heavy lifting for animation, at least when compared to frame by frame. One could say that animation lost a bit of its soul when it stopped being painted frame by frame, but the issue wasn't the introduction of computer software or semi-automation, which became a tool for animators. The issue was that this tool became somewhat obligatory because of the profit motive, because of capitalism. 
Capitalism obviously has tremendous impact on art, and we tend to forget about that because of capitalist realism, or the notion that we can't imagine anything outside of capitalism. To best illustrate the impact of the profit motive on cinema, we can turn to George Lucas. For my younger audience, he's behind Star Wars and Indiana Jones. And you can say that going in. One of the reasons I retired is so I could make movies that aren't popular. Because in the world we live in, in the system we've created for ourselves in terms of it's a, a big industry, you cannot lose money. So the point is that you have to, you're forced to make a particular kind of movie. And I used to say this all the time when people, uh, you know, back when uh, Russia was the, the Union of Soviet Socialist right. Republics, and they'd say, oh, but aren't you so glad that you're in America? I said, well, I know a lot of Russian filmmakers, and they have a lot more freedom than I have. All they have to do is be careful about criticizing the government. Otherwise, they can do anything and they so want. And so what do you have to do? You have to adhere to a very narrow line of commercialism. And there's only certain, and it, look, when I started in the 70s, it was like this. You know, I could say Russia was like this, but we were like this. You could do a certain kind of movie. And I flaunted that system. I mean, THX, my first film, is definitely not a, an American film, and I shoved it in sideways, and we, Francis helped me trick the studio. Yeah, you know, right, right. And nobody, they would have never let me make that movie if they knew what I was doing. What makes art soulless isn't the fact that it's generated by a machine, but the fact that it's commodified. The worrying thing about AI-generated art is that corporations will use it and make art even more stale, devoid of any innovation, of any soul. But that's not new, that's been happening for years. For a system that supposedly encourages risks and innovation, capitalism has been doing quite a terrible job culturally. Let's stick to what sells and reproduce it, repackage it, and resell it as long as it's profitable. But that's not the only negative impact capitalism has on culture. For artists who need to make money to survive, they need to work for, usually, corporations. Many artists, just to afford living, just to justify their existence, need to sell out, need to make art they don't necessarily like or necessarily want to do. That makes for soulless art. Artificial intelligence can be an incredible tool for artists, but under capitalism, it'll become a requirement which, instead of enabling new ways for artists to express themselves, might limit and stifle their creativity. Perhaps one day I'll make a video on the impacts of capitalism on art, but let's get back to AI art. The introduction of AI art sparked a conversation about what art is, and to understand what art is, I'd like to quickly explore the reasons why we make art, and specifically, why would we make art in a world where artificial intelligence can do it for us? I've been watching The Stalker, directed by Andrei Tarkovsky, written by the Strugatsi brothers, where a writer, as they take a break in their journey, gives a monologue to a science professor. The writer not only positions humans at the center of art, he also argues that it's our purpose to create art. And while he says that all this technology is a crutch, I see it as a way of slowly liberating ourselves from the necessity to labor for survival. The less we need to labor for survival, that is, to labor to feed and shelter ourselves, the more we can labor for personal and collective growth, that is, the more we can put work into creating art, into understanding art, and exploring art. It might sound like a foreign idea today, as most people's purpose in life becomes their jobs, and most people's appreciation and understanding of art is the consumption of entertainment. You might see where I'm going with this, and you might not like it. Narrowing the definition of art is something very scary to many people. Separating art from entertainment, or high art from low art, is an exercise that can lead into elitist territory. 
However, I believe AI art forces us to narrow the definition of art. That, to me, is the AI art revolution. AI art is going to increase our standards as to what art is. From now on, there will be art and illustration. The conversation about the definition of art has been sparked many times in the art world, perhaps most famously with Marcel Duchamp's fountain, where Duchamp presented a urinal and claimed it to be art. He argued that by forcing us to treat this object as art, it became art the moment we engaged with it as art. This object, without the artistic intent, was not art. With the artistic intent, it became one of the most influential artworks of the 20th century. One of my favorite terms coined by Duchamp was retinal art, or the idea that some artworks just appeal to the eye and nothing more. He was quoted famously for saying, I was interested in ideas, not merely in visual products. I wanted to put painting once again at the service of the mind. This distinction between the painting at the service of the mind or the eye, the idea that culture is aimed at growth and not entertainment, creates a divide, a divide exacerbated and confirmed by AI art. This divide brings me to think, not every drawing, not every painting, not every sculpture, not every picture, not every image is art. The same way not every text is a novel, a poem, or art, the same way not every video is cinema or art. It's pretty, but is it art? AI art is finally making people realize that art isn't beauty. Something can be very beautiful, yet not be art. A sunset isn't art, though it can be beautiful. A tree isn't art, though it can be beautiful. However, these can become art if contextualized and conceptualized as art, as Duchamp once did with the urinal. I think AI-generated images are the same. They can be beautiful images, but not art, because beauty is not enough anymore to make an image art. You can paint a beautiful landscape or a really cool looking character, but if it doesn't create an engagement with an audience in any way aside from creating a sense of beauty, if it acts as entertainment or just appeals to the eye, then to me, I'm more comfortable calling it illustration. Art requires something like a social conversation, a broader reflection, a deeper meaning or intention. This is why Scorsese calls Marvel movies theme parks rather than cinema. I'm applying that to the visual arts, which is why I'm okay with calling retinal art illustration rather than art. And as long as AI illustration can't give deeper meaning or engagement to an image, no matter how beautiful it is, it'll remain illustration. It's pretty, but it isn't art. If you make images just because they're beautiful or cool looking without deeper meaning or engagement, you're making illustrations which, by the way, isn't necessarily a bad thing. I will enjoy a landscape painting which doesn't have any other meaning than this is a cool landscape the same way I'll enjoy a sunset or a really nice tree. But just like the sunset, I won't consider it art. However, if you want to make art, be thought-provoking, share an experience, contribute to people's understanding of the world, use an image as a tool of communication, not merely as a tool of entertainment. As an artist, you have to think of the writer in Tarkovsky's Stalker. If our purpose is to make artworks, how can you fulfill that purpose? Ask yourself, is it enough to appeal to the eye as would a tree, stars, mountains, or AI-generated images? I don't think it is. Not anymore. AI-generated images is not the death of artists, and even less so of art. It might be the death of illustration or illustrators. Photography killed a whole industry of artists once it became popular. People who drew products for advertisements, people who painted portraits, etc. lost their jobs. However, photography also pushed artists into modernity, forcing them to create new ways of expressing and interpreting the world around them, new ways of engaging and having others engage with the world. AI art will force artists to stop making art for the sake of making pretty or cool images. AI art will force artists to make specifically, precisely, and authentically human artworks, artworks designed to be engaged with, designed to contribute to a social conversation, designed to communicate. An artificial intelligence can recreate beauty, but can't recreate the thought, the meaning, and the intent behind an artwork. That, I hope, will lead us towards a wave of more thoughtful, 
meaningful and intentional artworks. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing if you have already. I'd like to thank Roman Brandl, Mike Wex, and every other patron for supporting the channel. If you also want to support the channel, check out patreon.com forward slash the canvas. Oh, and by the way, Happy New Year's. Is that good? <laughs>